Hi guys and girls and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to start making our FPS camera controller. First I would just want to talk about how we're going to do this. So we're going to have our camera and we're actually going to parent it to our FPS arms. Not to the player but to our FPS arms, very important. And we're actually not going to move the camera at all. We're going to move the FPS arms or the player. We're going to get input from our mouse and then we're going to rotate the player left and right. And then the camera is also going to rotate with it. And once we rotate up and down, we're going to rotate our FPS arms up and down and the camera is going to rotate with them also. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. First off, I just want to move the camera to desired position. So I'll just set the rotation to zero and then move the camera. The position on X should be 0, the position on Y is going to be 0 0.5 and the position on Z should be minus 0 0.5, something like that will work, actually 0 0.4, minus 0 0.4 on the Z axis. So the camera is not going to move from this position at all. Then what we need to do is create a new C sharp script that we're going to call camera controller. We're going to take that and put it on our camera. And open up the script. I'm going to delete this unnecessary code. And the first thing I need is two transforms, one for the player and one for player arms. What I did here is exactly the same as if I did this. So those two are exactly the same, but of course the previous one is much cleaner. So I'm just going to go back and use this. Now this is a private variable because, because we haven't set anything else. But if we want to set it in the inspector and still want it to be private, we can use serialize field like this and if you want to type these brackets just press right alt that's on the right side of your uh, spacebar and then press F or G and now you can see that this is still private but if we go ahead and take a look at the inspector we can see that we have these two available so we can go back and now we need our void update we're not going to need void start. First thing I want to do here is that in most first person shooter games you will have some kind of a crosshair to aim with. A very good way of doing that is just taking a small picture of a crosshair and then putting it at the position of your mouse. If we don't do this step, our mouse is just going to be all over the place. So we can do that by going cursor dot lock state equals cursor lock mode dot locked. This is going to make it so it's always centered. Very important for later, for later, we're not going to use it now. And then also, we now want to write our code, but since we want to keep this organized, I'm just going to create a new function, call it rotate camera. And if you remember what we learned before, we also have to call this function in the update method or else it's not going to get called. What we need is our mouse input. We can do that by creating two new floats one called mouse x and a float mouse y. Now, how do we get our mouse input? We can use input dot get axis and get the axis of the mouse. Same thing here. Now we just need the name of the axis. So if you remember, we can check that by going edit, project settings and input. And right here, you can see that we have two axes, mouse X and mouse Y. Mouse X is moving the mouse left and right. And mouse Y is up and down. So that's quite useful. Note that it's not mouse X altogether. It has a space in between, very important. So 
mouse x, I'm just going to type input.get axis mouse x with a space in here. And for the mouse y, I'm going to tap mouse y. Now the, we have the same problem as before. This will only return minus one or one. And we do not want to move only for one each frame. We want to move, we want to be able to increase or decrease that value. So what we can do is create a new float up here and call it mouse sensitivity and also gonna type above it serialize field. Let me just zoom in a bit more. Now we can set this in the inspector and now we need to create two new floats. So float rotation amount x which is going to be equal to mouse x times the mouse sensitivity. So that means the input from our mouse times mouse sensitivity. Float, I'm also going to create a float for rotation amount y. It's equal to mouse y times mouse sensitivity. Pretty simple for now. If we want to move this player or FPS arms, we need to change its transform rotation. So we need that as a variable. I'm going to create two new variables a vector 3 because it's rotation for rotation of the player arms that will be equal to player arms dot transform dot rotation dot Euler angles now I'm not sure how to pronounce this so it's basically a way of showing rotation of an object and we also need a vector 3 rotation of the player and then we're going to go player dot transform dot rotation dot Euler angles. So we have these two variables right here and then we access their rotation and their, their rotation is on their object transform rotation. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we need to actually add onto this vector 3 and we can do that by either decreasing or adding onto well this vector 3 with rotation amount. Now this is where things get a bit tricky because it's kind of inverted and things. First I want to move the rotation of the player arms on the X axis. So that is up and down because if you try to, if you imagine the X axis as the left and right, and if you try to rotate around that axis, it's going to be up and down actually. And we have to set that to be minus equal to rotation amount y now why why y and not x it's because rotation amount y is the up and down and this is also up and down basically this is up and down and this is up and down or this is up and down of the player arms and this is up and down of the mouse as i said it's a bit tricky then we also need the rotation of the player arms on the z axis now You'll notice that we don't have a rotation amount or a mouse Z. That's because we never want to rotate our camera around the Z axis. Or not for now, at least. So we're going to set that to zero. And the last one is when we're moving left and right. And when we're moving left and right, we also want to move our player with us. That's very important for the end of this video when I'll show you something else. So we'll go rotation of the player dot y plus equals the rotation amount x. This, this is probably the trickiest part here. And if you get this, you're good. If you don't, it's still cool. You'll get it once you do it like a million times. And now we actually need to tell it to move. So we can just go player arms dot rotation equals to so we're setting so we're setting this rotation equal to something else quaternion which is a way a uh, way of representing rotations that Euler rotation of the player arms and also player dot rotation equals to quaternion dot Euler rotation of the player so this is something that should work. I will select the player just so I can show it to you a bit better. Click play. Okay, it seems like we got a error. 
And that's because we haven't set our variables here. First off, we want to set the mouse, mouse sensitivity to like three. And then we also want to drag the player to the player variable and the player or the FPS arms to the player arms variable. And now it should work, I think. If we try and move left and right, you can see that it works and the whole, and the whole player is rotating with it. And up and down also works, the arms go up and down. You see if we move too much up that our character starts glitching. And that's because when it comes up here, it just keeps rotating around itself. We can go back to our script and tell the rotation to not move above 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees. So we we'll, we would need a new variable up here, a float called x axis clamp. And that basically means like x axis limit. And we'll set that to zero. Right here where we're making the rotation amount Y, underneath that we're going to set the X axis clamp equal to or plus equal to mouse X or rather rotation amount X. And underneath here we're going to che check if X axis clamp is bigger than 90 then we want to do something. Then we're going to set rotation of the player arms on the X axis to be 90. And we're also going to set X axis clamp equal to 90. My mistake, this should be decrease, so minus. Right now, X axis clamp and rotation on the player arms dot X are the same values, so if this is 90, then this is also 90. So if it's looking straight up, we don't want to move it any further. We're just going to lock it in place. This is basically it. And also else if X axis clamp is less, is less than minus 90. So if it's looking straight down, we want to set the rotation we want to set X axis clamp to minus 90 and we want to set the rotation player arms dot X to equal minus 90. Or do we actually? So this is also a bit tricky. We want to set it to 270. That's got to do with like local and world space. I think I'm pretty sure. But uh, if you again, if you don't understand, it's cool. I don't either. I just use it because uh, you can't understand everything f for now. So now this should work properly. If we click play, we move up and you can see that this doesn't work actually. Okay, I see what I see what I did. So I set root amount X here. It should be root amount Y. If you noticed that before, good for you. Now if we play, move, we move up, it stops right here. We move down, it stops right here. That works perfectly. Now we have a second problem, or like a millionth. When we move forward, you can see that we're not moving forward, we're moving sideways. If we rotate, again, we're not moving. Only if we're, only if we're looking forward, we're going to move forward. And that's a small problem that we made with our player motor script. So whenever we did our move direction, we haven't told it which axis to use as a forward axis. Now, his forward axis is always going to be this axis, so the Z axis of the world. Now we can fix this very, very easily. By going up here, and I'm gonna set move direction to be equal to transform. I'm gonna set move direction to be equal to transform dot transform direction. And then I'm gonna type here, move direction. I'm gonna feed it move direction. Hopefully this will work now. And now if we move, we're, I'm, I'm just pressing W and I'm always moving forward, sideways, backwards, nice. So basically what we did is we told it that the rotation of our player and not the world position is going to be our forward. But that's it for today actually. We did a bunch of stuff here. 
Hopefully you guys understood it. If you haven't, I'm really sorry. Try again or watch the video again and hopefully you'll get it. And in the next episode, I'm really not sure what we're going to do, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and share it with your friends. You can go support me on Patreon if you want. There's links to that in the description and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye bye.